So far, you've created XML HTTP request objects using the code you see on the screen highlighted, and it works very simply. It checks whether or not the browser has an XML HTTP request object available as part of the window object, and if so, creates a new XML HTTP request object with this statement. That's for non-Microsoft browsers, however, you can also work with Microsoft browsers if you check the window.activex object and if that is available you can create new ActiveX objects this way and in particular you can create a new ActiveX XHTML HTTP request object using this statement. So you see there that creates a default XML HTTP request object in the Microsoft Internet Explorer. That's fine, however you should know and that will work for all of the entire code we're going to develop in this course and should certainly be fine for all your AJAX development. However, you should also know that there are various levels of XML HTTP request objects available in the Microsoft Internet Explorer. So you can change the code to something like this, a little bit more elaborate, where you say you can use various different levels of the Microsoft XML library that's built in. There are actually four levels of the Microsoft XML library built in, and we'll start off with actually with just the level two. You can say msxml2.xml.http. So here's here's the way the code works. If you're familiar with the try statement inside JavaScript, it attempts to execute some sensitive code, and if the code does not execute properly, then there's an exception is thrown and you can catch the exception like this. Okay, so this is how you work with sensitive code that may not work in JavaScript. You use try and catch blocks and part of, it's a part of standard JavaScript. So for example, you might say XML HTTP request object equals new ActiveX object msxml2.xml.http and what that does is that attempts to use the version 2 of the XML library built into Microsoft Internet Explorer to create your XML HTTP request object. You can go up to 4 if you like. There's no substantial difference as far as the XML HTTP request objects go in from the default value, but however you should know that this is available. If this does not work, if you cannot create a level 2 or library level 2 XML HTTP request object, then an exception is thrown and you can catch this exception like this. And you can then try to create a default XML HTTP request object with the code we've used before, just using Microsoft.XML HTTP. If that doesn't work, then you catch this, the second exception that's thrown because this statement didn't, didn't operate correctly, didn't execute correctly. You catch the second exception that's thrown and set XML HTTP request object to false. In that case, you're not you're probably not dealing with a Microsoft Internet Explorer browser, or you're dealing with one that you could be dealing with one that's version four or earlier. However, it's the probability is you're not dealing with a Microsoft Internet Explorer browser and you just work with the assumption that you're working with Firefox or some other non-Microsoft browser, you can create a new XML HTTP request object using this code. First check to see whether or not the request object exists if it, and also whether or not the XML HTTP request object exists as part of the window object and if so, you can then create a new XML HTTP request object for non-Microsoft browsers this way. So if you want to, this function, this technique works. Try catch blocks working with Microsoft Internet Explorer levels 2 through 4. However, as I said, there's no material difference for us, certainly, in this, in this course between the default XML HTTP request object created with this line we've already used and the other versions, the 2, 3, 4 versions of the XML HTTP request object. However, it may occur that in the future there is some additional functionality built into the XML 
library in the Internet Explorer, and you may want to take advantage of that with the XML HTTP request object that you create, and this is the technique to use the alternating try catch box. So you attempt to create a new XML HTTP request object for a various level of library, of XML library, built into the Internet Explorer, and if it doesn't work, you catch the exception and try again. So that's the way it works. However, our code will be, the code we've already developed will be sufficient, certainly for this course, and should be sufficient for your Ajax work as well.